Hello everybody and welcome back to In Response EDH. My name is Albert and today you're in for a treat. We have a double header for you. In game one we have a new player Michael joining the group and he's playing Kirik, son of Yogmob. He starts the game off with an extra pay, Karn the Great Creator, Scroll Rack, Viscera Seer, Cabal Ritual, Dark Ritual, and a Glimmer Void. Mike is back and he's playing one of Jose's decks, the Reaper King. He keeps an opening hand of Lay of the Land, Heap Doll, Read the Bones, Boundary Inspector, Hondin of Life's Web, Rogren Triome, and a Sunken Hollow. Jose is back and he's playing Sliver Overlord. He keeps an opening hand of Island, Diffusion Sliver, Crypt Sliver, Blood Crypt, Taiga, Scalding Tarn, and Polluted Delta. Baron, the winner from episode one and two is back and he's bringing back Chainer, Nightmare Adept. He keeps an opening hand of Garna, the Blood Flame, Graveborn Muse, Mindstone, Command Tower, Swamp, and Two Mountains. With the introductions out of the way, let's start the game. Baron starts the game off by playing a command tower and passing the turn. Michael draws a card, plays a swamp, and passes the turn to Mike. Mike plays a tap to Rogren Trium as his land for turn and passes to Jose. Jose plays a polluted delta as his land for turn. He sacrifices it, forgetting to pay the one life, and searches up a tundra to the battlefield. Turn 2 starts with Baron playing a Swamp as his land for turn, tapping 2 mana to play a Mind Stone. Michael drops an Urborg as his land for turn, taps 2 mana to cast a Scroll Rack. With nothing else, he passes to Mike. Mike draws a card, plays a Land of War Wastes, taps it for 1 colorless mana to play a Heap Doll. Jose draws his card for turn, drops another expensive land, and passes a turn to Baron. Baron draws for turn, plays a mountain, and taps all four mana to play a Graveborn Muse. Michael on taps, plays a Glimmer Void as his land for turn, taps one black mana, to cast Dark Ritual, adding three more black mana to his mana pool. He then taps one and uses the three floating mana and pays six life to cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. He then pays one mana to activate the scroll rack, putting two cards from his hand back on top of his library and drawing two cards. Michael uses Yogmoth's ability and pays 4 life to cast a sign in blood, drawing him 2 cards and losing him 2 life, which also allows him to put a 1-1 counter on his commander. After that he passes the turn. Mike plays a Savai Trium as his land for turn. He then taps the Land of War Waste for 1 green mana taking 1 damage to cast a Lay of the Land, which allows him to search up a basic force to the hand. On Mike's end step, Jose flashes in a quick sliver, which allows him to play sliver cards at flash speed. He then moves to his turn, draws a card, and he casts a diffusion sliver. Jose plays a scalding tarn, cracks it forgetting to pay the one life, and searches up a plateau to the battlefield. After that he passes a turn to Baron. Baron starts turn 4 by using Graveborn Muse to draw one card and lose one life. Baron plays another mountain. Baron then taps 4 mana to cast his commander. Chainer Nightmare Adept. He then taps his command tower for black mana to cast a Viscera Seer. Baron moves into combat and swings at Mike, dealing him 3 damage. With nothing else, he ends his turn. 
Michael untaps and draws a card. Plays a Nykthos Shrine to Nyx as his land for turn. He then pays two life to cast his own Viscera Seer. He then follows that up by paying another four life to cast a Lashrak Sigil. He pays two mana and taps the Nykthos to activate its ability, giving him a total of six black mana to his mana pool. Michael pays one mana and two life to cast a Cabal Ritual, adding an additional three mana to his mana pool. Michael uses two of his floating mana and pays two life to cast a Yawgmoth's Will allowing him to play cards from his graveyard until end of turn. In response, Mike sacrifices his Heap Doll to exile the Cabal Ritual from Michael's graveyard. Michael decides to pay another 2 life to cast Dark Ritual from the graveyard, adding an additional 3 mana to his mana pool. But he doesn't stop there. He also pays another 4 life to recast the Sign in Blood, drawing him 2 more cards and losing him 2 more life. He draws into a Demonic Tutor, paying 2 life and 1 mana, to search his library for a card and puts it into his hand. All the while, Michael has been putting on plus 1 plus 1 counters on Crick. Michael then plays what he tutored up, an Aether Flux Reservoir. He then explains how he's going to combo off to the table. Hey, you're yeah. good, I think. That's a game. Because I pay oh, four yeah. life to put Shri uh, Lashrak Sigil in my hand. Yeah. I pay two yeah. black, cast it, I gain nine life. Yes. And, yep. and just keep doing it. Repeat. Yeah. That's game. That's game. Turn four. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> good job. Hey, I lost pretty. You lost that pretty, yeah. Congratulations to Michael on his first win. This was his first game with us, and it was very impressive. There's a lot of ways to abuse Aether Flux Reservoir, but I think this is one of the coolest ways. Using Kyrick to recast the Sigil over and over again while gaining life from the Aether Flux Reservoir. Basically gaining him infinite life and allowing him to shoot down his opponents with the Reservoir. Since this game was so short, we decided to give you a double shot at EDH this week, so let's move on to game two. This game was filmed the same day as the one featured in episode seven. I'm going first in this game, and I bring back my favorite, Yannette, Cryptic Sovereign. I keep an opening hand with an Ancient Tomb, Elish Norn, Time Wipe, Sunken Hollow, Marsh Flats, Snow-Covered Plains, and a Snow-Covered Swamp. Next we have Matt, and he was playing his Azika God of the Tree deck. He keeps an opening hand of Sphinx of the Second Sun, Kodama of the East Tree, Birds of Paradise, Faber Elder, Vault of Champions, Polluted Delta, and a Rejuvenating Springs. Jesse's going third, and he's playing his K&T Enchantress deck. He keeps an opening hand with Sylvan Library, Swords to Plowshares, Gavany Township, Exotic Orchard, Temple Garden, and Two Plains. In this game, Daniel was playing Drana, Calastrial Bloodchief. And he keeps an opening hand with Sinkhole, Reanimate, Phyrexian Reclamation, Demon Lord Belzenlock, Cabal Coffers, and two Swamps. Enough said, let's get to the game. I start the game off by playing a Sunken Hollow tapped and passing to Matt. Matt plays Rejuvenating Springs, taps it, and plays a Birds of Paradise. Jesse plays a tapped Temple Garden and passes to Daniel. Daniel plays a Swamp and taps it to cast Phyrexian Reclamation. On turn two, I play a Snow-Covered Swamp and pass the turn to Matt. Matt plays a Vault of Champions on his turn two and taps three mana using the Birds of Paradise to play a Fey Burrow Elder. Jesse drops a Gavany Township on the battlefield, taps two mana, and casts the Sylvan Library. Daniel plays another Swamp, tapping both mana to cast an Azor's Gateway. 
I start my turn off by drawing a card, playing a Marsh Flats as my land for turn, sacrificing it and paying one life, and shocking in a Hallowed Fountain, dealing two more damage to myself. I then tap all three of my mana to cast an Aminatu, the Fate Shifter. I use Aminatu's plus one ability to draw a card and put a card from my hand back on top of my library. After that, I pass the turn to Matt. Matt untaps, draws a card, plays an untapped breeding pool, dealing two damage to himself. He then taps out to cast the Prismatic Bridge from the Command Zone. Jesse starts his turn by drawing three cards with his Sylvan Library, but only choosing to keep one, not dealing damage to himself. He plays an Exotic Orchard, taps two mana to cast a Ground Seal, drawing a card when it enters, and keeps us from targeting cards in our graveyards with spells or abilities. Daniel starts his turn by tapping one and using the Azor's Gateway to exile the Ogin of Knight's Reach and drawing a card. He then plays a Cabal Coffers as his land and ends his turn. I start my turn off by playing an Ancient Tomb, then tapping out, taking two damage from the Ancient Tomb to cast my commander, Yannette, Cryptic Sovereign. I then use Aminatu's plus one ability again to draw a card and put a card from my hand back on top of my library. On Matt's upkeep, a Seeker's Triggered ability will activate, allowing him to reveal cards from the top of his library until he hits a creature or a planeswalker. He hits a Sakashima of a thousand faces, and when it enters the battlefield, makes a copy of the Faeborough Elder. He taps a Breeding Pool for green mana, and the Faeborough Elder for five mana to cast Kadama the East Tree. He then plays a Wooded Foothills as his land for turn, and with Kadama's Triggered ability on the stack, Jesse responds by exiling Kodama with Swords to Plowshares, gaining Matt 6 life. Kodama's ability will resolve, and Matt decides to drop a Polluted Delta onto his battlefield. Matt follows that up by casting the Omen Keel. With nothing else, he passes back to Jesse. On Jesse's upkeep, he draws 3 cards from the Sylvan Library this time deciding to keep one extra card, taking four life. Jesse plays an island as his land for turn, and taps two mana to cast a Bloom Tender. Daniel untaps and draws a card for his turn. Unfortunately, he misses his land drop and has to pass the turn to me. I untap and reveal the top card of my library, which is a Miracle card, Temporal Mastery. I tap the two mana to cast Temporal Mastery for its miracle cost, allowing myself to take another turn after this. I then tick up Aminatu one more time to draw a card and put another card back on top of my library. I tap my Ancient Tomb for two mana, taking two damage to cast an Arcane Signet. I then move to combat and swing my commander at Matt, activating her triggered ability and revealing an Elish Norn, which I cast for free. When Elish Norn enters the battlefield, it gives all my creatures plus two, plus two, and all my opponent's creatures minus two, minus two, which is enough to kill the Bloom Tender and the Birds of Paradise. Matt then takes five damage, and I move to my second turn. On my first main phase, I activate Aminatu one more time to draw a card and put a card back on top of my library. Not liking what I see, I decide to cast a Vampire Tutor taking two life to search my library for a card. I choose to grab an Expropriate and I put it on top of my library. I then swing my commander at Matt and Elish Norn at Daniel, triggering Yannette, allowing me to cast Expropriate for free. Daniel, Matt, and I all vote time, giving me an extra turn for each one of their votes, and Jesse chooses money, which allows me to steal Jesse's Sylvan Library. I then cast a Tribute Mage, allowing me to search up an artifact with a converted mana cost of two and put it into my hand. I then tap two mana to cast a scroll rack that I tutored for. Side note, I'm not sure how I pushed the tribute mage into my graveyard, but I did and I didn't catch it for the rest of the game. I then move to my second extra turn, this time off the expropriate. I draw three cards from the Sylvan Library, choosing only to keep one, 
and putting two back on top. I pay one mana to cast a brainstorm, drawing three cards and putting two cards from my hand back on top of my library. At this point, Daniel decides to exile another card with his Azor's Gateway, and Matt sacrifices both fetches and pays two life to search up two lands to the battlefield. I play a Prismatic Vista as my land drop, then move into combat. I swing Elish Norn at Jesse, and I swing my commander at Matt, giving him a total of 15 commander damage. Yannette's ability will trigger, and I reveal an Ingaruk's Wake, which I get to cast for free, destroying all creatures and planeswalkers I don't control. On my second main phase, I decide to sacrifice my Prismatic Vista to search up a snow-covered island. I then uptick Aminatu one more time, drawing a card and putting a card back on top of my library. Then I end my turn and move to my third extra turn. I start my turn off by activating the Sylvan Library, but only drawing one card. Then I use Aminatu's plus one ability to draw a card and put a card back on top of my deck. I then move into combat swing my commander at Matt again, giving him 20 commander damage, and Elish Norn at Jesse for another 4 damage. Yannette's ability will trigger, and I reveal Blatant Thievery, and choose to steal Jesse's Exotic Orchard, Daniel's Phyrexian Reclamation, and Matt's Prismatic Bridge. I then pay 5 mana, dealing 2 damage to myself using Ancient Tomb, to cast Doom Whisperer. I then move to my fourth extra turn and activate Prismatic Bridge on my upkeep. I reveal cards till I hit a Sepulchral Primordial, but can't use his Enter the Battlefield ability due to Jesse's Ground Seal. I then use Sylvan Library to draw three cards, but only keep one, putting two back on top. I then pay two life to surveil two cards with the Doom Whisperer, sending both to the graveyard. I then pay two more life with the Doom Whisperer to surveil the next two cards, keeping them both on top. I then move to combat. I swing my commander at Jesse and send Doom Whisperer and Elish Norn at Matt, but we forget to subtract the damage from Matt's life total. Unit's ability will trigger, revealing a Mind's Dilation. On my second main phase, I tap 7 mana, dealing 2 damage to myself from the Ancient Tomb to cast Our Runes Epiphany, giving myself another extra turn and creating two 1-1 one, one blue bird tokens. Before I end my turn, I use Aminatu's plus 1 ability again to draw a card and put one back on top. On my upkeep, I trigger the Prismatic Bridge, finding an Emrakul and putting it to the battlefield. I use the Doom Whisperer again, paying 2 life to surveil the top 2 cards and send both to the graveyard. I tap one blue mana to cast a Serum Visions to draw a card and scry the next two cards, and decide to bottom both of them. I then use Aminatu's plus one ability to draw a card and put a card back on top of the library. I then move to combat, swinging my Yannette at Jesse, Elish Norn at Daniel, and deal 14 damage to Matt with the Doom Whisperer and two birds. Yannette's attack ability will trigger again, revealing a Cavalier Gales. When it enters the battlefield, I draw three cards and put two cards on top of my library. On my second main phase, I play a Morphic Pool as my land drop, tap one mana to cast a Soul Ring, and finally, after seven turns in a row, pass a turn to Matt. Matt finally gets to untap and cast a Court of Bounty, making him the Monarch. When he casts the Court of Bounty, Mind's Dilation will trigger, exiling the top card of his library and I get to play it for free. I find a Torolf, God of Fury, on the top of his deck. He then draws a card for being the Monarch and passes the turn to Jesse. Jesse plays a Plains as his land for turn and with nothing else passes the turn to Daniel. Daniel draws a card for turn, plays a Swamp. Daniel pays one mana to use the Azor's Gateway to exile Runescar Demon and draw a card. With nothing else he passes the turn to me. On my upkeep, the Prismatic Bridge will trigger again, 
revealing a conduit of ruin. I then move to combat, swing Yannette at Matt, dealing the last points of commander damage, Emrakul and Elish Norn at Jesse, dealing 19 damage, and the rest of my creatures at Daniel, dealing 35 damage. Finally putting everybody out of their misery and ending the game. Like I said during the intros, this is my favorite deck. It's strong, explosive, and Esper, my favorite color combination. I really gotta hand it to the guys for hanging in there and playing it out. There was a lot of discussion during the game about why Jesse targeted Kodama with the Swords of Plowshares instead of Yannette, but Matt was about to go off with a bridge and two Faber Oilers on the field, and he would have had 15 mana at his disposal his next turn. What would you have done in that situation? Leave us a comment down below. We would love to hear your thoughts. Well, that's it for episode eight. We hope you enjoyed the games. Please make sure to like and subscribe, follow us on our social medias, and join us on Twitch for live Commander gameplay every week. Thank you again for watching. Have an awesome day.